Hello science people! Today I want to talk to you about evolutionary structures. These are anatomical structures that we use to help us determine the ancestors and the history of evolution among organisms. There are three evolutionary structures, homologous structures, analogous structures, and vestigial structures. Let's first start with homologous structures. Homologous structures are structures that organisms share because they share common ancestors. So, I am a mammal, and let's look at my arm. I have a humerus, I have an ulna, I have a radius, I have carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Now, I have these bones in my arms but so do all mammals. All mammals have these bones or a slight variation of these bones because we share common ancestors. Now, thinking of like a dolphin or a whale, these are mammals, but they have flippers and I have hands that I use to play video games. Very different functioning, but if we look at the anatomy, a dolphin also has a radius, an ulna, metacarpals, carpals, phalanges, all of these same parts because they're homologous structures. We share common ancestors because we're mammals. So again, homologous structures are anatomical structures that we share with other organisms because we share a common evolutionary ancestor. Let's talk about analogous structures. Analogous structures are structures that have the same function but they don't have the same anatomy. For example, the dolphin and a shark. Dolphins and sharks have very similar body shapes because that body shape works really well in the ocean. And so dolphins have flippers. They have flippers that help them swim and so do sharks. But if we look at the anatomy of the two, they're very different. When we look at the anatomy of a dolphin, its flippers has fingers inside because it evolved from a land mammal. But a shark is a fish, and if you look at the, uh, the flippers, if you look at the anatomy of a shark's flippers, it's one solid bone because sharks and dolphins are not related. And so these are called analogous structures. Some other analogous structures would be like a human's eye and an insect's eye. They're both used for seeing, they both create vision, but structurally, they are very different because we don't share any recent common ancestors. The third evolutionary structure is vestigial structures. Vestigial structures are remnants from our ancestors. These are structures that we no longer use. They're usually shrinking, going away. Sometimes they have a small purpose, but usually they don't. I think a good example is whales. Whales have a leg bone, but they don't have legs. This is a remnant of their ancestors that used to have legs and walked on land. Another example is the legs of snakes. Snakes have two leg bones in the back, but snakes do not have legs. To help me discuss vestigial structures, I have this albino Burmese python. Pythons are one of our more primitive snakes. Because they've been around so long, they still have the remnants of a femur back when snakes had legs. So snakes are squamates, meaning that they're related to lizards. And so they have a vestigial leg. It's called a pelvic spur, and we can see it right next to the cloaca. And so this is a femur that is sticking out of their body. The femur is just floating in muscle. It's not attached to their spine. Human tailbones are a vestigial structure. I have a tailbone, but I don't have a tail. It would be much better if I just didn't have the tailbone. Anyone who's ever broken their tailbone has wished that they didn't have a tailbone. And so this is a vestigial structure, is a remnant of our ancestors. I hope you enjoyed learning about evolutionary structures, and we'll continue the discussion of evolution in future videos.